were at about 6.20 this morning. It looks like, it turns out the fish like cooler weather than hot weather. <laughs> Probably Presco feels the same way. Um, turns out this is our 100th day since the major military operations have ended, ended in Iraq. And since then, um, we've made good progress. Uh, Iraq is more secure. The economy of Iraq is beginning to improve. I was interested to know that banks are now opening up and the infrastructure is improving. In a lot of places, the infrastructure is as good as it was at, at pre-war levels, which is satisfactory, but it's not the ultimate aim. The ultimate aim is for the infrastructure to be the best in the region. And the political process is, uh, is uh, moving toward democracy which is a major shift uh, uh, of, uh, of system in that part of the world. And uh, we're, we're pleased with the progress, but we know we got a lot more work to do. And the secretary was briefing me on the, on the ongoing uh, security operations and uh, the status of our forces. And, uh, but I can say, I think you can say progress is being made, not only in Iraq, but in Afghanistan as well. And then we spent time uh, making sure that our military is configured in such a way as to represent the modern era, which means it will be more likely that the world will be peaceful. A modern, strong, light, active and a military uh, will make it easier to keep the peace. And after all, that's the objective of the administration, is to promote freedom and peace. And uh, the Secretary and his team are doing a really good job for the American people. Uh, welcome back to the ranch, Mr. Secretary. We're thrilled you're here. And Thank you, sir. We'll be glad to answer a few questions. Uh, start with the wires, of course. Thank you, Mr. President. You talked about progress, but there's some unfinished business in Iraq also. Yeah, no that's Saddam. what I also said. we got more to do. To be specific, no Saddam, no weapons. Fifty-six soldiers have died in this hundred days, including right. one last night. Um, what can you tell the American people? about how many more soldiers will die. And also, your commander in Iraq said yesterday, two years, absolute minimum. Yeah. Is that an assessment yeah. you share? Uh, well, first of all, uh, we suffer when we lose life. I mean, our country is a country that uh, uh, grieves with those who sacrifice. And our heartfelt sympathies and appreciation go to the loved ones of any soldier who's willing to uh, defend the security of the United States, and that's what they're doing in Iraq. It's very important for people to understand that this is a, a part of the war on terror, that we're dealing with terrorists today. We learned a lesson on September the 11th, and that is our nation is, uh, is uh, vulnerable to attack. And we, we were doing everything we can to protect the homeland by making the homeland defense uh, a department effective in securing the borders. But the best way to secure America is to get the enemy before they get us. And that's what's happening in Iraq. And we're grateful for the sacrifices of our soldiers. I said, I said, Scott, on, uh, right after September the 11th, that this war on terror is a different kind of war. And it's going to take a while to win the war on terror. However long it takes to win the war on terror, this administration is committed to doing that because our most solemn obligation is the protection of the American people. And uh, as I said, the Secretary and I discussed uh, what's happening inside of Iraq, and we've got a lot of brave soldiers slowly but surely demolishing uh, the elements of the Ba'athist regime. Uh, those foreign terrorists who feel like they can use Iraq as a place to arm up and inflict casualty or perhaps gain strength to come and you know, attack Americans elsewhere. Uh, we've been there a hundred days. We made a lot of progress in a hundred days. And uh, I am pleased with the progress we've made, but fully recognize we've got a lot more work to do. Do you want to add to that, Mr. Secretary? No, sir. Should the American people expect two more years? At least no, the American people should suspect that this administration would do what is necessary to win the war on terror. That's my pledge to the American people. They have got to understand that I will not forget the lessons of September the 11th. And those lessons are loud and clear. That there are people who want to inflict harm on the American people. We lost 3,000 plus on that fateful day. 
And, uh, you know, I, I made the pledge to the American people and the families and those who grieved that we will hunt down the terrorists wherever they are and bring them to justice. And that's what we're going to do. Steve. What, what do you think of Arnold Schwarzenegger and would you consider campaigning for him? I will never arm wrestle Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> no matter how hard I try, I'll never lift as much weight as he does. I think it's interesting. It's, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a follower of American politics. I find it the, what's going on in the state of California very interesting, and I'm confident the citizens of California will uh, will sort all this out for the good of the citizenry. Would it be a good yeah. governor? You know, I, as I say, I'm interested in the process. It's Fascinating to see who's in and who's out, and uh, uh, yeah, I think he'd be a good governor. Dick, Mr. President, there are reports today that Israel is willing, perhaps, to reroute the security camps it's been uh, building. Is that enough of a concession by the Israelis, or should they abandon construction of the fence altogether? Well, Dick, let, let me put the fence and these issues into a larger perspective, if I might. Uh, in order for a Palestinian state to emerge, a couple of things must happen. Uh, first, uh, the Palestinians, the people in the neighborhood, must deal with terror. Must rout out those who would like to destroy the process. The fence, by the way, is a reaction to the days when there were terror. I've said the fence is a problem because the fence is, you know, kind of meanders around the West Bank, which makes it awfully hard to uh, develop a contiguous state over time. And so I said we've talked to the Israelis, and we are about the fence, but the f we must have the fence in the context of the larger issue, and the larger issue is, will the conditions be such that a state can emerge? And it's important for uh, a Palestinian state to emerge, in our judgment, because the world will be more peaceful, Israel will be more secure and more or as importantly, the Palestinians will have hope. But all parties must work against those who would uh, make it very difficult to achieve the vision. Is rerouting it a step forward, a sign of progress? Well, as I said, look, the Israelis are willing to work with us. They said we'd consult, we're consulting. Uh, in order for there to be the progress that needs to be made, there needs to be security. Defense was a reaction to in some ways a reaction to you know, the, the, the days of the Intifada. And the more secure Israel feels, the more likely there will be a, uh, you know, a peaceful state. The more secure uh, the region is, the more likely institutions necessary for the development of a, of a Palestinian state will emerge. And so on all these issues, we'll deal, of course, with both parties. We're staying very active. Ambassador Wolf is doing a fine job there. Uh, but it's important to put all these issues in the, in, the, in, the, in the larger context of what is necessary to achieve what we think is what I think will be great for the region, that is a peaceful Palestinian state. Larry. Uh, Mr. President, uh, you've given us a, an update on Iraq and, and progress and stabilization there. Uh, at this point, are, are you able to give us even a, a ballpark estimate of, of what it may cost, say, in the next fiscal year? No. And, and will Americans be the ones who bear most of the cost of that? Well, uh, two points there. One, uh, we, 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 we don't generally don't do our estimates on the back of an envelope. In other words, by that I mean uh, the commanders in the field will be dealing with the Secretary of Defense. Jerry Bremer will be bringing recommendations. And of course, we'll go to the Congress in order to fund any requests. And the request will be well thought out based upon some variables. And one of the key variables is how much money we can get other nations to contribute to the reconstruction efforts of Iraq, or how many other nations are willing to contribute forces. And uh, this, and so therefore, this is a, you know, the budgeting process is one that's ongoing. It's an iterative process. I guess the best way to put it. Iterative is the right word. Yeah. No, Which is, is it too fluid then? I mean, you're saying because until we know no, no, how at some many point people are going to help out, we don't know. It, no, it's fluid up to a point, but obviously we're going to have to make a request. And when we do, it'll be a request based upon sound judgment. It'll be a well-thought-out request. It'll be one where the Congress will be able to ask legitimate questions like you're asking, and will be answered. And, uh, and they're now in the process of coming up with a, with a uh, the basis for a request to the United States Congress. 
Now, I remember, by the way, the initial stages of the war in Iraq, and the questions were, how long, how long is it going to take? I think it kind of echoes the question that Scott asked. How long will you be there? How long will it take? And I can remember saying, as long as necessary. Remember? I don't know if you remember the offensive stage of the war. It, you know, you, you, were, you were doing an interesting job of trying to get us to make absolute predictions. And what is necessary is to achieve an overall strategy, and whatever it takes to achieve the strategy, this administration is committed to then. But, but you know, going into yeah. that, sir, you, you, you actually gave a, a pretty accurate projection of what that would cost. No, well, uh, going into it, I, you're right, and I, we'll give you an accurate projection of what it's going to cost next year at the appropriate time. And, but also going into it, there was the timetable question, which also relates to the spending, and that is, why won't you tell us how long it's going to take? And my answer was, how long, however necessary, is how long it'll take. And that's the way we feel now. And uh, we are, we're working hard to bring other nations to bear responsibility in Iraq. Uh, I, I want to say something about Afghanistan. Uh, Germany has taken a very active role in Afghanistan, and we're very thankful for that. As NATO steps forward, Germany has assumed a, a big responsibility, and we, we really appreciate the German participation. And the reason I bring that up is, is that that's a change from six months ago. And not only is Germany's participation important, it's robust, more robust than we would have anticipated. I, I look forward to thanking uh, Chancellor Schroeder for that. And, and Larry, the point there is, is that things do change, and we will have a budget that is as accurate as it can possibly be when we go to Congress, because we understand the questions our, our planners and operators will receive, and uh, they will come with good, sound data. Uh, Dana, and then Mark, and then we've got to get in before we have a heat stroke, right? <laughs> before you have a heat stroke. Excuse me. For you and for Secretary Rumsfeld, please. Secretary Rumsfeld, did you authorize Pentagon officials to uh, hold some secret talks with Iran-Contra figure Monica Garba Garbonifer in order to push for regime change in Iran. And Mr. President, do you think that's a good idea? And is the new policy, official policy, regime change in Iran? I uh, had not had a chance to see these articles, or an article that I guess exists. Uh, I did get briefed by uh, Condi and Larry Dorita here a minute ago. And uh, my understanding is that uh, some one or two Pentagon people were approached by some people uh, who had information about Iranians that wanted to provide information to the United States government, that a meeting did take place, is more than a year ago, and uh, that uh, such a meeting did take place, and the information was moved around the interagency process uh, to all the departments and agencies, and uh, it dropped. That is to say, the, as I understand it, there wasn't anything there that was of substance or of value that needed to be pursued further. So it's your understanding that this wasn't intended to uh, sort of go around any uh, other talks that have been going on, either unofficial talks with the Iranians? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, there, it, it, everyone in the interagency process, I'm told, was apprised of it, and uh, and it went nowhere. It was just, uh, the, this happens, of course, frequently, that if people come in offering suggestions or information or possible contacts, and uh, Sometimes they're pursued. Uh, obviously, if if uh, if it looks as though something might be interesting, it's pursued. If it isn't, it is. Well, we support the aspirations of those who desire freedom in Iran. And uh, Mark, Mr. President, what's yes. your response to uh, the Democrats, including Al Gore yesterday, and some of the Democratic presidential candidates, who say that? The American people were misled in advance of the war about the reasons for going to war, that you said disarming Iraq was the main purpose, but since then no weapons of mass destruction have been found. I say it's pure politics. Listen, thank you all. Have a beautiful day. You want to say more than that? No, it's just pure politics. you got a lot of people running for president, and it's pure politics. The American people know that uh, you know we laid out the facts, we based the decision on sound intelligence, and uh, they also know we've only been there for 100 days, and we're making progress. A free Iraq is, uh, is necessary for uh, a, is an integral part of the war on terror. And as far as all this political noise, it's, it's going to get worse as time goes on, and I fully understand that. And uh, that's just the nature of democracy. Sometimes pure politics enters into the rhetoric. Would Thank you, you all. Yeah. one on Germany? To do, do you think that signals a shift that Europe might be coming around to help it out in, in Iraq now? Oh, I think that uh, we're getting, I mean, look, uh, 
Great Britain has been helping out in Iraq for a long period of time. Poland has been helping out in Iraq. I mean, we got a lot of people helping out in Iraq. Uh, and I thought that the German decision in Afghanistan uh, is, uh, is, was an important decision, and we're grateful for that. Listen, thank, thank you all. You. Would you mind if I just ask about the meeting you had? Sure, go ahead and ask about the meeting. I, I mean, I know that's a meeting, but... Beautiful meeting. <laughs> but, I, you know, are you now satisfied that, that maybe after reviewing our force strength, that American forces are not stretched too thin by the war on terrorism, or, or maybe potentially could be uh, down the road? Satisfied. We discussed that uh, in, in the meeting, and uh, it's a fair question. Uh, needless to say, when you have a, a spike in activity uh, at crisis in Iraq, and, uh, and uh, it is important to review those questions. Um, Dick Myers and his folks in the military review them continuously. We have found there are literally two or three, or about two dozen things we can do that reduce stress on the force. And uh, the, the cost of adding end strength is significant. The time it takes to bring them in, recruit them, train them, equip them, uh, means there's a significant lag. So it's not something one does uh, quickly. And as a result, we've got a major effort going on to take advantage of all the things we can do to increase the, the um, kinds of ways we can relieve that stress uh, on the force. And it looks to me like we're going to be able to do that. And uh, on the other hand, uh, our country can afford to pay uh, for forces at the level that, that can help defend and protect us. And to the extent at any point it looks as though a end strength increase is appropriate. We obviously would recommend it, but we certainly don't see the evidence of that at the present time. Any new 100 Thank Degree you. Club members? Uh, yesterday we added one. Thank you know him? Uh, Secret Service agent. You going running today? No, I'm not. Did Dick is Cheney still catch alive? anything? Dick Cheney, he's a great fly fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Not a member of the 100 Degree